blessed assurance. I am not a lucky man. I am a blessed man. There is not here a prophet. Is there not here a man who can romance God? Hey. I said, hey. Can I prophesy this? Prophesy. Your door has been opened. Amen. I said, your door has been opened. Amen. I speak at the servant of God. That your door. Amen. We thank God for tonight. If you are excited to be in God's house, if you agree like David that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into God's house. Can you show your excitement with your hand clapping, with your voice of triumph? Hallelujah. We thank God for tonight. And <laughs> it's true. Different vessels, but the same oil. Uh, the atmosphere is soaked with the power of God. And in any moment from now, God is going to release a word into your life that will cause you to become an answer to the questions. My father, the general Basia, welcome everyone to our evening prophetic rally. Um, and on behalf of everyone here, I want to salute my father, Prophet Bernard, or Bernard Nelson I salute you very much. You are not excited, you are not clapping. Celebrate this man. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. I want to thank God for the life of the mama of the house, our own royal mama, and Minel. As I also appreciate the life of my, of my own wife, uh, Mrs. Vera Bannerman. All protocol observed. Salute to the men of God in the house. Um, this month happens to be a month of uncommon sacrifice. And so I want to teach something on sacrifice. Um, go with me. Go with me. Because of time, let's just go into God's word. Um, go with me to Hebrews chapter number 10, verse Hebrews chapter number 10, verse 11. I'll read a couple of verses today from different chapters. Then we'll see how everything will go. Hebrews chapter number 10, verse 11. If you are there, say amen. amen. If you are not there, say help me, Jesus. And every priest standard daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. And every priest standard daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, say, but this man, this is talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice. Tell somebody, one time sacrifice. When your sacrifice is quality, when your sacrifice meets the requirement, Bible said when this man offered one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the father. That means that one sacrifice he made was enough for him to sit down knowing that the quality of the sacrifice will be able to deal with every issue and every challenge that will come by your way. I pray for you that within the course of your work on earth, God gives you what it takes to make a one-time sacrifice. A different day, a different message I'll preach on one-time sacrifice. Let's continue reading the Bible. Um, the same Hebrews chapter number 12, verse 32. Hebrews 12, verse 32. So Hebrews um, 12, verse 24. Um, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, to the blood that's, to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. To the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. The voice behind the blood of Christ, 
that speak better things than that of Abel is by virtue of the sacrifice that was made. That means that Abel's blood has a voice, but the power of the, of the blood of Abel can only speak for himself. It can't speak for others because he, Abel did not offer himself as a sacrifice. He died, so he, he was murdered. So when Abel's blood cries, it cries for vengeance. But because Christ Jesus offered his life, that means that his sacrifice or his blood, the voice of that blood has has um, a strong effect than that of Abel. And so the voice of the blood is the voice of the sacrifice that he made for us. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. I'll read this one and then one more to just establish um, the fact and then. Let's go to Genesis chapter 27 and come back to Acts chapter 12. Let's do it that way to help me make my point across. Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. Let me read from verse number 22. Let's say from verse 21. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son, Esau, or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, look at this very well, and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, that means that even though the voice was that of Jacob, he discerned him not because there was another voice that was speaking for Jacob at this point in time. He discerned him not. Because his sons were hairy as his brother, as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Adam, my very son Esau, and he said, I am and he said, bring it near to me that I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat. And he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto me, come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and smelled, look at the word, and smelled, and smelled um, of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, see the smell of my son as is the smell of the field which the Lord had blessed. Um, just a second. I just want to establish a point then. I can just release God's blessings over our life and then we'll go. Acts chapter 9 verse 36. Acts 9 verse 36. Acts 9 verse 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and arm deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lida was now to Joppa, disciples had heard that Peter, who, is, um, who stands for the, um, the office of the apostle or any man of God. So he says that Peter was there and they sent unto him two men desiring that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them 
And when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and the garment of and the garment which Dorcas has made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave what she had, and he gave her his hand and lifted her. He gave her his hand and lifted her. And when he had called the saints and the widows, presented her alive unto them. All right. Tell somebody the voice of my sacrifice. Say the voice of my sacrifice. As we, have, as we are on this earth, there are a lot of voices that have value on this earth. Not everybody who makes a statement um, has his voice valued. Uh, in every atmosphere or every environment is a voice that is held dear in that atmosphere. And so when you come into this atmosphere, probably any of us would, would, would be somebody wherever we are coming from. But in this atmosphere in which we are gathered, the voice that is cherished most is the voice of my father, Prophet Bernard L. Bernard, why? Because of the sacrifice that he has made. And so it doesn't matter who comes here to minister. It doesn't matter their level in society or even in ministry. Their voice will not be held in high esteem than the voice of our father because the sacrifice he has made here for us to be where we are, none of them have made that sacrifice. And so anytime you enter into an atmosphere, you must understand that every atmosphere is ruled by a voice. That is why when you enter into a certain place and you don't speak well against the man that has made the sacrifice, the people can be tempted to beat you. You there's um, if you if you go to a place like where I'm coming from, Siano, and then you make any wrong statement against the Otumfo because he is the voice that controls the atmosphere. The people will make sure that they rise up against you because when you talk with the voice that controls an atmosphere, you are toiling with the destinies that controls the atmosphere because it's the voice that controls the atmospheres that gives meaning to that atmosphere. And so in this world, there are different kinds of voices and, everybody, and everybody's voice is by the sacrifice that he has made. That is why somebody said Bill Gates is not, is, is not a Ghanaian, but his voice holds power in certain quarters because of the sacrifice he has made. And so when anytime I see Microsoft, I see a voice behind Microsoft, and that voice behind it is that of Bill Gates. That means that the sacrifice he has made is what has brought out a product. And so I must value that sacrifice, and by the value of that sacrifice, I must give honor to that sacrifice by one respecting him for what he has made and also paying him for the sacrifice he has made. So there are a lot of voicings in this world. My prayer is that God will cause you to become a voice in this generation. Mm. Your voice cannot hold value in my life if you have not made any sacrifice worthy of note in my life. Your voice cannot hold any value in my life. The value of your voice in my life is in the sacrifice you have made. The voice of my wife's hold value in my life because of the sacrifice she has made to spend her life, to spend her life with me. And so if my wife demands something, and then somebody else demand the same thing, I will answer the voice of my wife. Why? Because there is a sacrifice behind that voice. And so, without thinking, spontaneously, um, if, I'm in, if, if I'm in a place and two people are drowning, and then my wife and then another person is drowning, and they are all crying, all other things being equal, I'll be attracted to the cry of my wife. 
Because there is a sacrifice behind that voice. Are you with me tonight? I'm, 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 I'm almost done. So my response to your demands, my response to what you ask of me is dependent on the sacrifice you have made. Number, the effect of my words over your life or the effect of the words of a person over your life or against your life is dependent on the sacrifice he has made. Now this is why I never talk with anybody who has made an investment in your life. That is why a man could have, a man can be successful in life. Probably when the man um, married the wife, there was nothing to show, but the wife makes a sacrifice for the husband. And then 10 years, when the husband thinks that he has now gotten money, he begins to maltreat that wife. Let me tell you, if that wife decides to naked herself in the bedroom and begins to speak against you, her voice will work against you because of the sacrifice just made. That is why when a, when, when a young man wakes up one day and began to, and begin to insult his father or his mother, when the mother speaks against, even if a priest pray, it cannot work. Why? Because the sacrifice that the parents have made, it's possible that no man of God that you are under has made that sacrifice. Because when you could not sleep at night, though that man of God was not there. When you were pooping, it was not the man of God was changing your diaper. The mother has made a sacrifice and so their voice holds value. The, my, the voice of my sacrifice. And so Bible says in Genesis chapter 27, a young man called Jacob begins to take a journey. And then I am, I am just around the, the town and I heard of what he was discussing with the mother Rebecca. And so I was trying to tell Jacob that this is a suicide mission because we are looking for Esau and not Jacob. And so I tell Jacob that, Jacob, your voice even disqualifies you because your voice and Jacob's are not the same. That is why I said the voice of the Lord. The voice of our Lord Jesus is not like our voice because his voice has the power to steal the waters. His voice has the power to quench the fire. And so Jacob, and Jacob's voice and Esau's voice are not the same. Jacob stands for the youngest and Esau stands for the elders. And Bible says Christ is the firstborn, which means that by the firstborn, it is only Christ that has what it takes to be able to receive a blessing from the father. Follow me. And so he comes and then Isaac said, bring the sacrifice. I'm with the story because you know it. And immediately he speaks. Isaac said, the voice is that of Jacob. Uh, and so by everything he must curse Jacob. But immediately he smells a sacrifice. And know that Behind every sacrifice is a voice. And so the sacrifice that in the olden days were like a burnt offering. And so the only way you can know which sacrifice it is, that means that if you are good, when we kill, probably um, when you're in a place and you, and you smell something, what you smell will communicate to you whether it is this type of animal or not. The the animal is not speaking that I am a goat or I am a sheep. But when you smell, the smell communicates a voice to you. That is why when I'm coming back from town and then I get to my gate and I smell. I must not know what is going on. But when I smell my wife to you, it communicates to me that something good. So that sacrifice has a voice. And so... Jesus is looking, Isaac is looking for a voice. Sometimes we have, we, have, we have said that Isaac made a mistake because he should have waited for Jacob, for Esau to come because if the voice was not the same. No, he did not bless him because he was confused about the voice. There was another voice, which is the voice of the sacrifice. That was blessing Jacob. And so... Bible says that in the same way that the sacrifice of Jacob 
qualifies him into a place he does not deserve. In the same way in Hebrews chapter 10, Bible said that people offered sacrifice, but the sacrifice of bulls and ram did not have the power that will give them the voice to have access. And so their sacrifice cannot be heard. What God is saying is that when they sacrifice bulls and rams, that sacrifice cannot be heard because it is not quality. And so Bible said, Jesus Christ, just by one sacrifice, sat down and the voice of that sacrifice is speaking. And so he puts that to off. He says that the voice of the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. And so now I am Jacob. When I am coming to Christ, I don't deserve to be there because I don't belong directly to Abraham. I am a Gentile. Number two, I am not even the firstborn because Christ is the firstborn and the inheritance only answers to the voice of the firstborn. But Bible said, therefore, let us put on Christ Jesus. So when I come to the Father like Jacob, I put on the garment of Christ and I come not by my own sacrifice, I come by my, the sacrifice of Jesus and the voice of that sacrifice is able to speak for us. I declare over your life tonight that made the voice of the sacrifice he made. He said, by one sacrifice, that means I don't need to die for you by one sacrifice. It just took one sacrifice. And Bible said, when that sacrifice, the blood dropped down, Bible said, the curtains just departed into two by one sacrifice. When that sacrifice dropped down, Bible said, the gate of hell was open. Hell could not contain that sacrifice. In the name of Jesus, any demonic hand against your life, by the sacrifice of Christ Jesus, may that hand give way. By the sacrifice of Christ Jesus, may the voice of the sacrifice speak on your behalf. And so when I get to a place where naturally I cannot get what I am asking for, I come by the voice of Christ Jesus and like Jacob, my voice is not like Jesus because his voice is the one that steals the waters. My voice does not steal the waters. My voice like Jacob is not like Esau's voice because the voice of Jesus quenches the fire. But when God hears, he said, this is not the voice of my son Jesus but yet that is a sacrifice he has made. And so being said, by that sacrifice a voice is speaking for you. And so Bible said there was a woman called Dorcas. And this woman called Dorcas was a woman who understood sacrifice. Sacrifice means that for going what is precious to you, that others might live. Jesus Christ died that others might live. Anytime Dorcas sows a garment for one of the widows and their children, she sacrificed what she must buy food with and give it to them. And so that sacrifice was giving her a voice. That is why my father always tell you, go to the orphanage. That means that sacrifice your time, sacrifice your resources for people who don't have a voice. But that sacrifice will now open a voice for you that when they speak, God will hear. And so here is Dorcas who is dead. But they come to the elders and said, the voice of Dorcas is speaking because of her sacrifice. Is there anybody here tonight who have made an investment in God's kingdom and you are at the point of death? The voice of the sacrifice is speaking. And so number one, the voice of your sacrifice can pull a prophet into your house. Peter was not prepared to go to the house of Dorcas. He had not even thought about it. But when she heard the voice of her sacrifice, Peter said, I cannot wait. Wait. Bible said, and they came to Jesus and they said, Listen to this man's story, answer his issue. And he said, I don't mind. And he said, This man loves our kingdom. And he said, Anybody can love because love is seen in the sacrifice you make for that land.
child. And so he says that he loved our kingdom and has built for us a synagogue. And then he says the voice of that sacrifice is speaking tonight. As I hand over the microphone, God is releasing my father, the oracle prophet, into your life. There are some of you by divine calculation, he will not minister to you, but a sacrifice your father made. A sacrifice you made. Some of you, a sacrifice you made just within this year to sacrifice your annual salary for God's kingdom. But that sacrifice, God is releasing a prophet in your life. I'm almost there. I'm almost ended. Number two, the voice of your sacrifice can speak life into any dead issue. Now, Bible says that the woman of Shunem come to a point where the precious son he has is dead but she carries the boy and put it on the bed in the room representing the sacrifice they have made and so long as the sacrifice stood the boy cannot die anything born out of sacrifice cannot die is it your marriage tonight that is dying it is your finance that is dying I declare in the name of Jesus by the sacrifice he made and speak life into any death issue any issue that is dead even if you are like doctors and you are already dead but you are living I speak in the name of Jesus I speak life I speak life by the sacrifice the voice of the sacrifice can bring life into death issue the voice of the sacrifice can cause you to escape judgment Bible said there was a young man called Jonathan he did not know his father has declared that anybody that eat today must die and so Jonathan come to a place where by his sacrifice he has brought victory and so he just tasted honey and Saul said this young man must die and the people said how can he die when he has made a sacrifice when you sacrifice judgment is exempted when your sacrifice is seen, judgment will pass over you. And he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over. The blood is a symbol of sacrifice. In the name of Jesus, your sacrifice can speak even for your generations to come. A young man called Mephibosheth is at a, is at a place where he has given up on life. He was born in the palace, but he is living among the peasant. He was born in the palace, but he struggled for what to eat. And suddenly David is there. And he remembers, he remembers. Understand, David was in the battle, the house of Saul. And so ideally, he must kill everybody in Saul's house. But he remembers and he said, is there anyone in the house of Saul that I may do him good because of the sacrifice of Jonathan? Jonathan. That means within this month, we are going to make sacrifice. That after we are dead and gone, our sacrifice will speak for our children. Mephibosheth was struggling, but without doing anything, the voice of the sacrifice of Jonathan was speaking for you. There are some of you tonight, a call into a call into enforcement. Every sacrifice made for you, you look like your name is Mephibosheth. You are struggling in life, but your mother has made a sacrifice. Your father has made a sacrifice. There are some of you, your mother used to sweep the church, open the church every time. She never had money, but that was her sacrifice. Within this season, may the voice of that sacrifice speak on your behalf. Anytime God wanted to destroy the nation of Israel, and Bible said, and he remembered the covenant of sacrifice he has with Abraham. Sacrifice. Sacrifice can change divine decree. As Ezekiah, Bible said Hezekiah received a divine decree that you must die. Hezekiah tells 
his face to the wall and said, remember now, O Lord, my sacrifice. And God said to Ezekiah, the voice of your sacrifice is speaking. Is there any word over your life that you do not like? I engage the voice of your sacrifice. I'll end on this one. The voice of, of your sacrifice can change your position. It is the voice of his sacrifice, Jesus, that has changed our position. Bible says we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. The, vo the voice of the sacrifice of Jacob changed his position from being the youngest to become the eldest. The voice of his sacrifice. And so Bible said that when Peter prays for Dorcas and raised Dorcas up, Peter does not just leave Dorcas, but Bible said that Dorcas was seated down like this when she got up, probably confused about where she was. And Bible said Peter gave his hand, lifted Dorcas. That means he changed his position. When he presented Dorcas, it was not the same old Dorcas, but this time, Dorcas has changed. Let me show you again. Dorcas is seated down. <laughs> Peter is standing. When he lifts him up, he brings him to the point of where he is. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, may your sacrifice cause your position to be changed. There are some of you, you are saying, I've been working in that place for a long time. There is no promotion. Ten years, five years. But today I call and I engage the voice of your sacrifice. May the voice of your sacrifice cause your position to change. When divinity is looking for men to honor, they look for men who have made a sacrifice. Get that unto me as I end. All those who have made with me a covenant by sacrifice. Get that unto me. And so, when one good sacrifice, he placed it at the altar. And Bible said he sits down. There are some of you within this meeting, and next two minutes, I'm done. Within this man, God is calling you to call, call you to make a sacrifice. It's a one-time sacrifice. There are some of you, God is calling you for the first time to carry your monthly allowance. How much is it? Just make a quality sacrifice. God is calling you to make a sacrifice of holiness. That man that you are chasing, that you know is, is married. God is calling you to make a sacrifice. The man is married. God said, make a sacrifice. Let the man go. Let the woman go. One sacrifice. He makes one sacrifice. And by that sacrifice, he sits down. He sits down. The quality of your sacrifice it's what will cause you to sit down and know that your sacrifice will speak for you. Even though Elisha is not around, the sacrifice of the room I may have built for him will speak for me. In the name of Jesus, I'm just calling 10 people in this place who my father come. Who says the man of God, the month is ending. Listen to me very carefully. You are saying that man of God, I've not done it before. But I'm giving my monthly salary.